Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create new volumes within FreeNAS. In particular, a new striped volume, that is, using the RAID stripe technique, and how to make those volumes shareable to a Windows client. The first step, as always, is to ensure the necessary prerequisites are in place. The first prerequisite is to ensure that you have FreeNAS installed onto a computing device. Well, if you have been following my YouTube FreeNAS 11 Beginner video tutorial series, you will have seen and learned how to install FreeNAS onto a virtual machine. And I will be demonstrating how to create new volumes using FreeNAS installed on a virtual machine. The second prerequisite is that we will need to add new hard drives to our FreeNAS installation. And we require to do this when FreeNAS is powered down. So we ensure that the FreeNAS virtual machine is selected, and then select settings, and then storage. Now, what we want to do is to add two new hard drives. So we can select the plus icon over the square icon. So, and you can see the tooltip that comes up there as hard drive. So we select that and we select create new disk. We will go with the default option, VDI, virtual box disk image and select next. We will choose a dynamically allocated disk and select next. So let's choose an appropriate name, free and um, free NAS, I beg your pardon, um, disk one. And why don't we create it to be of size 10 gigabytes? That's fine. And we just do the same thing once more, and we should create a second disk. Again, similar options, except this time we call it free NAS disk two. And again, choose the size to be 10 gigabytes and select create. Okay, that's great. We now have two free hard disks upon which we can create a striped volume. And recall the free NAS at VDI is the hard disk onto which the free NAS operating system itself is installed. Okay, to activate those changes, please select OK. The next step is to power on and run our free NAS virtual machine. So, once again, I will ensure it's selected and click Start. So this will boot up the FreeNAS operating system inside our virtual box. So I'm going to select it and click Enter. I'm going to select Normal Boot Up, press Enter. I'm going to, um, I was about to say, I'm going to remove, dismiss the notification message, but my mouse disappeared on me briefly and now it's back, great. So I'm going to select Close there and close again. Um, if you're unsure what those messages are, please review my earlier videos where I describe those messages in detail and how one should proceed. Okay, this is going to take a few minutes. So no harm briefly giving you an overview of what I plan to do. Um, the first step is we're going to log in to the administrative web console. Um, and then I'm going to view the storage manager and from that look at the disks that are available and we should see the two new stripe disks that I've attached to our virtual machine and then the plan is to create a stripe volume using those two disks. But I'll go through the various settings and configurations as they are quite interesting. There's lots of possibilities. Um, in the next video I will show you how to create a RAID 5 um, volume using four or possibly more attached disks. Let's take it one step at a time. Okay, we're nearly there. It's loading up. I'm purposely recording this because it's nice to show it in real time so you can see what's happening. Um, so your screen should ideally reflect my screen. And we're almost there. At any moment now, it should pop up with the IP address. And there we go. This is the IP address of the web administrative console for FreeNAS. So I'm now going to open up my browser. 
um, I'm going to go to that address 192.168.0.6. Notice on your PC the web address may be very different. It depends upon your network environment. So I'm now going to log in with the username and password that I assigned as a root username and password when I first installed the FreeNAS operating system. I'm just going to retype that to make sure I have it correct. There we go. And finally, we're presented with the FreeNAS Administrative Web Console. Let us go to our Storage Manager. I'm going to select Storage up here. And let us view the disks that we have available to us. So as we can see, we have no volumes as of yet. So I'm going to select View Disks. And as we can see, here are the two disks that we have created um, at the beginning of this video. They are called ADA1 and ADA2. OK, that's fine. The next step is to create a Stripe volume. So to do that, we once again select Storage. This time we shall select Volume Manager. So we're now prompted with a dialog box in which we configure the various settings. So the first thing is that we must enter in is a volume name. So I'm going to choose purely for educational and demonstrational purposes the name Stripe Volume. If I can type correctly, <laughs> Stripe Vol. Okay. Now see the option here volume to extend. Believe it or not, if we had an existing volume, we could actually extend that volume with our two new hard disks. But we don't have an existing volume, so we're not going to select that. Secondly, we could also choose to encrypt this new volume. Again, we're not going to choose that. So now we're going to get to the heart of the option. Available disks. So recall we added two new hard disks, each of 10 gigabytes in size. So I'm going to select the plus symbol here, and as you can see, it adds the two new disks to our volume layout. Okay. Notice, by default, the option that's selected is mirror. Now recall, a mirror disk, uh, using the mirror ray technique, what is written to one disk is automatically mirrored to the second disk. So although our disks are 10 gigabytes in size each, which should have a capacity in total of 20 gigabytes, the estimated capacity of the mirrored volume layout is only 8 gigabytes. So effectively, only one disk is used, plus 2 gigabytes is used as overhead, which is quite large, surprisingly. So as I mentioned in this video, we're going to demonstrate the, option, the striped option. So before I select striped, I just wish to highlight that there are several other options available. If we used to use a logging disk or use a disk as a cache, or indeed we can assign the disks as a spare, as a hot spare that can be used um, to automatically replace a faulty disk in another volume. But let's stick with Stripe for the moment. So notice I selected Stripe, immediately our capacity jumped up to 16 gig because a striped RAID technique offers no redundancy. So data is written to both disks. If we're writing a file, Effectively, or conceptually, half the file will be written to one disk and half the file to the other disk. Okay, so again, just to show you, the tooltip says drag and drop this to resize. If we had more disks here, we could include more disks in our Stripe volume, or indeed less. We could simply drag and drop, but as it happens, we only have two disks, and in order to have a striped volume, we need a minimum of two disks. Once again, I don't know why that went back to merge. I'm going to reselect striped. Very good. And I'm going to scroll down. And that's it. Um, add volume. If we select the option, existing data will be cleared. So I'm going to select the option add volume. Now this will take a few moments to create. Um, I'm going to leave this recording in real time, just, just so you get an idea of how long it should take. And once this volume is created, I shall select the option View Volumes so that we can properly see um, all the various uh, permissions. And these are the volumes. In fact, it's automatic, automatically selected. Volume is very good. So here is our Stripe volume. Okay. And if you notice, it has Stripe Vol and within that indented another row called Stripe Vol. Well, believe it or not, in FreeNAS, the indented stripe vol is called a data set. And a volume 
can consist of one or more data sets. Now in this case the name of the data set is the same as the volume. Okay. Now we can optionally view this information by scrolling down on the left hand side and choosing storage, volumes. As we can see we can just click view volumes and the exact same information comes up. I just want to make you aware that it's possible to do this from here. Also no harm to point out that compression is enabled by default on our volume and it uses an LZ4 compression technique which is very very fast compression. You might think oh because compression is enabled it will slow down our reads and our writes. Actually no. LZ4 is very very fast. It almost is as fast as reading and writing data to memory itself. So it will not slow you down when you attempt to write data to disk. The next step is to ensure that the permissions are set up correctly on the volume. So I'm going to select the striped volume data set, the indented one as you can see here, and then select change permissions. So this presents us with the volume following dialog box. Okay, change permissions. So by default the owner is root and the group is wheel. Okay. Um, interestingly enough we cannot change the permission types for Windows. So I'm going to leave it at the Unix permission types and I'm going to choose to enable all um, read write access for both owner, group and other. Effectively this means any user that connects to this volume will be, which will be under other can modify read, write and execute any file on that volume. Okay. Set permissions recursively, why not? Um, that means any folders created on our volume will have these permissions applied to them. Okay, so I'm going to leave those default settings as they are. So I'm going to click change and it says mount point permissions successfully updated. Very good. The next step is to create a shared folder which may be accessed over a Windows client. So let us select sharing and we wish to create a Windows share so let us select Windows SMB and then let us select add Windows SMB share. So we're asked first and foremost to select the path that we wish to share so select browse and let us navigate to our stripe volume and select it. So make sure you double click it to ensure that it appears here. So then I'm going to scroll down and use this home share. Um, why not? Let us choose the name again purely for administrative or should I say for educational and demonstrational purpose I'm going to call it um, Stripe Share. Okay. Let us apply default permissions Okay, and recursively set them. That's fine. And indeed let us allow guest access because we want to allow, in this case, any Windows client to connect to this shared folder and choose OK. So again, this will take a few moments and it says the Windows SMB share successfully updated. That is great. And it's very nice. Normally we would have to manually, manually enable the Windows SMB service, but it prompts us to enable the service. So we simply select yes and it will do it automatically. So it automatically switches to the services view and as you can see the SMB service is running. Okay, that's fantastic and it's automatically set to start on reboot. Okay, or on boot. Let us review the SMB Windows service settings. So to do that let us go to the left hand side, select services and scroll down and select SMB the Windows service and let's have a look at the various settings. Okay, um, they look good so far. Name, work group, looks fine so far. Scroll down. Guest account nobody, that's fine. We're going to allow guest access. Allow empty password, that's fine. Um, looks good so far. Looks very good. So the existing settings look fine. Um, the only change we've made is to allow empty password and select OK.
SMB service successfully updated. So no harm stopping the service and then giving it a moment and then restarting the service to ensure that those settings have taken effect. So I'm going to select now, start now again. Okay. I just realized I may have given you some slightly erroneous advice. Um, let us go back to the sharing option and let us select Windows SMB and view our shares. So we already have one existing share that we created, the Stripe share. So let's select that and choose edit. And I had originally selected, told you to use as home share. In hindsight, I should not have said that. So make sure you deselect use as home share and leave all the other settings as they were and choose OK. Perfect. So Windows SMB sure successfully updated. And now lastly we wish to view our shared striped volume from our Windows client PC via Windows Explorer. So I'm now going to select Windows Explorer um, recall FreeNAS is installed inside a virtual machine so effectively it appears as a different computer because it was set up using a network bridge and now for my client PC I'm going to run Windows Explorer and select computer add a network location and we're presented with the add network location wizard so select next where do you want to create this network location well you're only given one option choose a custom network location so select next and now we type the IP address of our FreeNAS server. Well, let's look at examples, I suppose, before we start typing. So we're going to use the top example, slash slash server share. So backslash backslash 192.168.0.6 backslash stripe, which is the name for stripe share, which is the name of our shared volume. And select next. I'm going to select the default name we're given and choose next and open this network location we're finished fine select finish and it's opened up the network share so voila <laughs> we've now accessed our network our, our shared volume our shared stripe volume and um, via a client pc using windows explorer you may recall that the default permissions for the volume that i created the stripe volume were full permissions, full read, write, and execute. In fact, just to demonstrate that, I'm going to go back to FreeNAS. I'm going to choose Storage, and it lists all our volumes. So I'm going to select the volume data set, the Stripe volume data set, which is the only data set within our Stripe volume itself. And I'm going to select Change Permissions. And as you can see, I enabled all permissions so that the owner, the group, and anyone else, including guests, has read, write, and execute access on this volume. Okay, so I'm going to hit escape to cancel out of that. So let us go back to our um, Windows client and to our Windows Explorer to which we've connected to this volume. And just to demonstrate that I have indeed read and write access, I'm going to right click and select new folder and type test folder and voila there is the folder created on our free NAS striped volume from our Windows client via Windows Explorer and likewise I can select it and choose right click and delete and I'm asked are you sure you want to permanently delete this folder yes I am and there you go so we have created a striped volume on our free NAS server and then connected to it from a Windows client as a shared folder with full read write access. That is exactly what I wanted to show you in this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, any queries, any comments, please like or please put the post them at the end of the video. Thank you very much. Bye now.